Uh, hello, so today we are doing this problem called minimum swaps to group all ones together. And so the problem says we have a binary array data and we want to return the minimum number of swaps required to group all ones um, that are present in the array together in any place. And so for example here 1010, we can, there are three ways to group all the ones together. We can either do uh, swap this zero with this one and get this here with one swap or we can swap this one um, in uh, in this zero position and swap this one with this zero position essentially doing two swaps and ending up with this or we can do one swap which is swapping this one with the middle zero here and get this um, this result with one swap so if you take the minimum number of swaps in each one of them um, the result is one so we return that and for this one, there is already just one, um, one value one, and so we just return zero. There is no swap needed. For this one, we can we need to do three swaps. Um, you can try it. We have to take this one, put it here, place this one with this one, or place this one with, uh, sorry, this one with this one, uh, to get the uh, to get three uh, three swaps. That's the minimum uh, number of swaps we can do. And the elements that we have are either 0 or 1. And so this problem here is a very good, uh, can be solved very well with a um, sliding technique here. Um, so basically, sliding technique, usually we need to think about it whenever we have uh, a question that asks us to minimize or maximize something. Um, but in a in a contiguous place. So, for example, here saying grouping all the elements together should we should think about we about having to um, find something contiguous, right? Because grouping them together means a contiguous sequence of ones. And since the question asks for the minimum something, minimum number of swaps, which we we could we should think uh, right away about uh, sliding window technique and think about whether we can use it or not. And so the idea here of using the sliding window technique is um, is doing the following. So the way we need to think about this is um, ask a couple of um, of questions. So um, so the let's just write the goal of what we want to do here. So, um, so the goal is um, the goal is to find the minimum number of swaps, <coughs> right? So, what is what 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 is the minimum number of swaps basically? Uh, minimum number of swaps that's just the minimum number of zeros in a window. Now, if we replace them with ones, them with ones, we get we get the, we get all ones grouped together. Now, so what this means is what we want is to have something like this, where we have just zero values, and then starting a window of one with all the ones, and then after that we can have zero values, right? This is what this means. So what we need is <coughs> having all the ones in this here. So what we can do is first, something that will help us is finding a value m that is um, the number of ones in the array. If we find that, that means that we know the size of the window we are looking for. The window we are looking for is basically starting here and should contain all the ones together. So when, if we find this, we know the, num we know the size of our window. And so what's left is just finding in the array, so let's say this one for example, after that what's left is just finding a window that contains most ones, right? Which means windows, so finding a window that contains most ones, um, so that we can basically need to swap just one or two zeros, um, a small number of zeros and get this contiguous sequence, right? And so, what does finding a window that contains most ones? That means 
finding a window that contains the smallest number of zeros, right? So right so that's so now what we need to do is just um, m find a way to minimize that so so one thing we know here is this so we know that our window size is fixed and so basically with sliding window technique there are two variants of sliding window techniques that you can look up and read about um, there is a fixed window one a fixed window technique and there is a vari variable window but here we know before we can determine the, the size of the window so we know that we are going to do this one and so one th other thing that we want know is that if we were let's say in this array if we were at this window here let's say and then uh, let's say we want let's take this one which is bigger which allows us to see more things so we know we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that we have m equal to six, right? So we know the size of our windows window is six. And so we know that we need so if we put our i here, our g would need to be at least six to have all ones. So without even questioning anything, we can just find six elements. So one, two, three, four. 5, 6. So our gene needs to be here at this position 6. So that we can have 6 elements. And from there, we can check how many zeros we have. So in this window, we have two zeros. That's what we said here is the number of zeros is, is the number of swaps we need to do, right? So the number of zeros in a window is the, is the number of swaps we need to do, right? Since the window is like the, the the length of the window is the number of element of ones in the array, that means whatever number of zeros in a window we need to swap with what the ones that that are not in that window, right? The number of swaps we need to do. And so here in this window here, uh, what? Let me just take this put it here. So in this window we have two zeros, two. Two zeros, which is the number of swaps. Let's call let's call that let's call that x. So in this here, x is equal to two, right? And so now we need a way to the whole the whole point of a sliding window technique is to easily move without recounting everything, right? So the goal of using this technique is easily move in a window without needing to recount to re like recompute um, the, the the function we are interested in which is here the minimum number of swaps right and so here x equal to 2 right and so if we move i here we don't need to count the entire window right we just need to check this one and the new the new value that entered the window so we need to check the value that um, that the window moved from and the value that the window moved to. So if the previous value was 1, that means that um, we, we have, uh, that means that we have one more swap to do, right? So, so actually if the previous value was 1, that means, I mean, there is no like x value didn't change which is x is the number of zeros so if the previous value was one x does not change but since the new value is zero that means the number of zeros increased so in this new window x becomes three right x becomes three and we move again and after that x becomes so the value is one the previous value that we moved from is zero so that means that our x decreased so our x is now instead of three it's two and the new value that moved we moved to is one so our number of zeros didn't change right 
And so we do the same thing, thing again, we move the window. The previous value was one, so the number of zeros didn't change. Let's call this zeros to make this clear. Um, the new value is one, so the number of zeros doesn't change. And the number of zeros is actually what we are going to compare. So we are going to keep track, sorry, I didn't, I forgot to do that. So we are going to keep track of min swap, which is the minimum number of zeros in a window, right? And so, so far we found two and three. So it's still two, right? That's the minimum number of swaps we have so far. And so here, uh, the minimum of swaps we have a new, we have, um, so with here the, the the number of the number of zeros is three, and then we move the window again. And the previous value was zero, so we decrement by one. The new value is zero, so increment by one. And we compare this with min swap. Min swap is still smaller, so we keep it. And then we move the window again, and we check the value we moved from, which is one. So we didn't we don't change the number of zeros. The new value we move to is 1, 2, so we don't change the number of zeros. And our j value reached the, the end. So we, we finish the, um, the search there and we return uh, 2 as the final answer. Uh, okay, actually, I made a mistake. I should not have found 2. It's, I didn't find 2. So the first window, it was 3. The second window, there were 3. The third window, there were three. Yeah, that was a mistake. It's always three. Sorry about that. But yeah, essentially, this is the way we do it. Um, finding a, a way so that calculating the window just depends on uh, adding or subtracting or doing some operation with the, the place that the window left and adding or computing and adding to the value, the, the value that the new uh, places that we added to the window contribute. Um, and that's the, essentially the idea. And so let's code this up. <coughs> so first what we said is we need m, which is the number of ones in the array. So that we can just uh, count in our data, count the number of ones. So basically this function is just, um, it's just a handy function in Python. Let me just show it here. So if you do, if we do Python here, so if we have an array like this, it's called this data. So what it does is it will just count the number of ones. So it, it will return three, basically. It just counts the number of one. If we do it for zero, sorry, for nine, there is no nine, so it's zero. For zero, there are two zeros. Um, so that's what it does. And so we have the number of ones here. Let's call them ones. Um, and that's the size of our window. And uh, min swap, which the first window, let's just compute the first window, which we know its size is, is it's just the first, uh, the first um, part of the array that is of size, the number of ones. And so that, that is basically, um, let's call these our current min. And that's like, um, that's uh, data, the number of ones. And let's count the number of zeros so that we get like, um, so this is zeros. Let me just do the same naming as we did here, right? So now we know the number of zeros in the first window. And now we just start sliding until the end, basically. And so what is the condition to slide here? So we can just say while. So we can start some i at, or let's say some j at um, the the number of ones, which is the end of the window, right? And while j less than the length of the data, we're just going to keep going until j reaches the end. And so, what is our current zeros, we said? When we are doing a new window, we check the previ the element we are just leaving, we check if it's equal to one. Then we, if it's equal to zero, then we add uh, then we, um, sorry, if it's equal to zero, then we subtract one, right? If it is equal to one, then the number of zeros didn't decrease. So if, so it's minus one if the value that we just moved from, which is j minus ones, which is the size of the window, 
Uh, maybe uh, let me call this size window so that it's really clear. Um, J minus size of window uh, is one. Then we uh, sorry if this is equal to zero, then we remove one because the zero the number of zeros decreased. Else we just remove nothing. Now let's take care of the value that the window just moved to. So we add one if the value that the window just moved to, which is j, that equal to zero, then we have a new zeros. So we have something, a new value that we need to swap with the one. Otherwise, we just add zero. And then we can just return at the end. We need to also um, basically do what we did here, which is update min swap if it needs to be updated. So means the previous min swap with the new number of zeros, right? And just return min swap at the end. And that's all. Okay, so we are doing something wrong here, which is not incrementing j. So let's just increment our j. Okay, so that should do it. Okay, so that passes. Um, one thing we can make for this solution to just be more clear is that um, we can just here, instead of doing the while loop, we, J is just has to be starting from the size of the window, which we said here. So instead of doing the while loop, we can just start from the size of window until the length of the data. That way it will get incremented automatically. Um, and then the other optimization we can do is this here, one if data is equal to zero, else zero, we can just use uh, the fact that in Python, if a value, let's say v is equal to two, and we ask if v equal to true, uh, uh, actually, and then, so it's not true, right? But uh, okay, sorry. So if I say not v, it would say false. But if v is equal to zero, and I say not zero, not v, it will say true. So if the value is zero, and this one here, if we, I say um, a plus, so if I say a equal, start with a equal to zero, right, and v is zero, right, if I say plus, not v. Sorry, uh, oh, I'm confusing myself. Uh, essentially, what I'm trying to say is instead of doing minus uh, one if data is this equal to zero, I'm just saying that instead of doing this, we can just add not because it will be zero if it, this value here would be one if the value is zero and would be zero if the value is not, is one. So, and the same thing here. But if it's confusing to you, you can just use the normal if else and, uh, and not get, get confused. Uh, but yeah, this is a way to shorten the implementation. And let's submit this. Okay, so this solution passes. Um, and uh, yeah, so just keep in mind this idea of sliding window and the way to um, a way to uh, to be able to identify those problems. Basically, that say minimize, maximize, find some sum in a contiguous place in an array. Um, yeah, and that was all for now. See you next time. Bye.